Right to its previous effort, the Alloy 9 was a great mini PC when we looked at it right at the end of 2023. Since then, the amount of tests added to the review regime has increased dramatically, which is one reason why each video still takes so long to publish. Now, Raya turns back with their new Silver 9 mini PC. The beautiful metal case returns with a Silver 9. I think this one is my favourite. It's just so nice to fondle that I start getting a rush of blood downwards. What were we talking about again? The change this time around is the CPU. While the Alloy 9 featured AMD's 7945HS, the Silver 9 comes with Intel's i9-12900HK, a 14-core 20-thread flagship from yester, yester, yesteryear. Graphics is handled by Intel's Iris Xe with 96 EUs. Included with Rayatan's Silver 9 is a large power brick, HDMI cable, and a couple of spare rubber feet. On the Fisher website, the Mini comes in at $389 for the 16GB RAM, 512GB SSD, or double both for $439. The Mini features a reset hole, 3.5mm audio jack, and dual USB 3 10 gigabit on the front side. Inside it is a MediaTek Wi-Fi Bluetooth card. The back has a barrel jack power input, USB-C 10 gigabit with support for power delivery and display using one USB-C cable. I tested it with my monitor and it worked fine. There's also HDMI 2.0, Intel 2.5G LAN, and dual USB 2 round off the remainder. A pretty sparse port selection on this one with a distinct lack of Thunderbolt 4, which is a bummer. The Mini can handle three displays at the same time with the DisplayPort 1.4 able to handle up to 8K 60Hz. Now you might have been thinking I'm going to complain about the glued on rubber feet, and you'd be right, but they're not glued on. They slot in and are easy to remove, thank god for that. The four screws underneath are next to be removed, and then you need to get some leverage somewhere to pop the lid out. A screw hole worked for me. And as almost always, there's a cable to watch out for while lifting it. There's just one M.2 2280 Gen 4 NVMe slot at full X4 speed, an M.2 Wi-Fi card next to it, and dual channel DDR4 3200 RAM. Unfortunately, no further storage slots. Windows 11 Pro comes pre-installed on the SSD. Malwarebytes says no rootkits or malware found on this mini. Want to use Linux? Good choice. Ubuntu worked just fine running off the USB. We have looked at Intel's i9-12900HK in a mini previously, so we've got a comparison point in most of the charts going forward. Starting with Cinebench Single Core. The 12900HK today is in the middle of the chart, and also where the mid-range CPUs lie. It's performing as it should in the Silver 9. Moving on to Multicore. By default, Raytan has set the power limit to 45 watts, which is on the lower side. Still, at this limit, it's not too far off the NAB9 Mini PC. I increased the power limit in the BIOS to see how far we can go, and that showed a 13% uplift. That places it around the Intel Ultra 5125H in Cinebench, so mid-range again. The varied Geekbench single-core benchmark places the 12900HK around the middle. It outperformed the newer Ultra 5s and even the Ultra 7 155H. Multicore performance is less impressive, getting beaten by the AMD 6000 series flagships. And the H.264 video encoding test shows that the 12900HK is slower than the Ultra 5s in this task, so it's below average at exporting video. Not much changes with the AV1 test. The difference with this benchmark over the previous one is it's much longer and puts the cooling under pressure. The Silver 9 holds up fine and stays in its lane. AI time. Interestingly, increasing the power limit didn't make a noticeable difference to the CPU score, so it's not included. The DDR4 memory looks to be holding back this CPU for this workload. It's not an impressive score using the AI algorithm, with the Ryzen 6600H holding up well against it in everything except quantized. And on the AI GPU side, pretty abysmal performance getting thoroughly curb stomped by Ryzen 6600H. My advice? Don't buy the Silver 9 for AI-specific workloads. Intel try their best to compete with AMD with their Iris Xe graphics and fell short during this generation. And the next. And the next one after that. And after that. The newer Intel and AMD graphics score almost double the 12900HK, but minis with those also cost around three times as much, or even more. Positioning on the chart is similar with DX12 TimeSpy, and similar with Steel Nomad Lite, 
which uses the latest DX12 graphics techniques. The iGPU is definitely a weak point of this generation, but in esports games where CPU performance is more important than graphics, the 12900HK does pretty well as long as you stick to 1080p low settings. It gets close to 200 FPS for Valorant. Dota 2 is around half that. Counter Strike 2 drops below 70 FPS average. And League of Legends is similar to the Valorant numbers. So those are okay, but in today's AAA gaming landscape, Iris XE doesn't do so well. Cyberpunk 2077 is around 17 frames per second at 1080p low. With XESS upscaling set to auto, it's a bit more playable, but still a miss. Grand Theft Auto 5 Enhanced Edition is fine, although this is with the minimum detail preset, so there's not much enhancement. Baldur's Gate 3 also runs poorly. FSR helps, but still not a good experience. Finally, a simpler game like Hades 2 works just fine. Intel CPUs do well in emulation. Here's Breath of the Wild running above its original target frame rate at 1080p. Motorstorm Pacific Rift on PS3 manages to hold a 30fps average. Same as the PS3, but again at a higher resolution. So not a bad choice for those wanting to emulate games. The audio latency test with Cinebench running in the background passed with flying colours. This looks to be the lowest DPC latency we've seen so far. The Silver 9 also makes for a good video editing workstation thanks to Intel's excellent video decoder on the iGPU. It's much snappier during the editing process than the AMD Ryzen equivalents. But as we saw in the CPU video encoding benchmarks, export times won't be as quick as the newest CPUs. An SD card reader on the Mini would have been nice for the video editing side. Raytan Silver 9 came back with the highest 3D Mark storage score. Well done there. The drive temp maxed out at 59C, which is nothing to worry about. Bluetooth range is slightly below average at 3.5 meters or 11 feet. But wireless range was good with the usual test at 12 meters or 39 feet from the router using the 5G band. No connection issues or dropouts during a full esports game session. Idle power draw of 13 watts is on the higher side, and same as the NAB9 with the same CPU. Power draw is more impressive, a maximum of only 78 watts at default and 91 watts when increasing the power limit, which is much less than the NAB9's maximum. CPU temp also held up really well, one of the lowest maximums recorded at default and still under 90C with a power increase. Fan noise is far from the lowest we've seen, but there is room to lower it in the BIOS, allowing the CPU temp to go up further before the noisier fan cycle kicks in, especially with the default power limit. Raytane Silver 9 is a pretty compact mini PC and slightly below the average volume. Turbo pressing the delete key during startup will gain you access into the BIOS, which looks just like a mini's forum BIOS. Same manufacturer? Anyway, in advanced CPU configuration, power and performance has the power limit settings. I use 75,000 to force the maximum. A CPI setting has wake on LAN and power loss options. Hardware monitor allows you to change the fan curve if you want less noise and allow the CPU to cook a little more. There's a memory overclocking option which does nothing. 3200 is the limit. That's all the stuff of interest in the BIOS. We've looked at the Raytan Silver 9 in great detail, now let's go over the pros and cons. I get to handle a lot of mini PCs on this channel, it's been hundreds over the years. This is probably the nicest metal finish and aesthetic design I've come across. Very well done. Cooling is good and able to keep the i9-12900HK under control. If you need an Intel Mini for something like video editing, the pricing is competitive with the NAB9. 
Happy to report, no wireless range issues here. However, the iGPU performance is weak, as is the port selection. Only one storage slot is included, and the power brick is large. Overall, another mini PC with no major issues, and that always warms my cold dead heart. The Silver 9 features what is now at best a mid-range mobile CPU at a mid-range price, and will suit those that have a brand preference for Intel or working with multimedia. It's a competent mini PC, and if you like what you saw and want the AMD version, then you should check out my review of the Raytan Alloy 9 right here, which won a place in my top 5 mini PCs for 2024. Cheers!